When I think of the glamour of the golden years of Hollywood, this is what I imagine. Pools, patios and balconies. Clean lines and panoramic views from the vast window walls. But some of the most gorgeous American homes of all time were actually built by an Austrian, Richard Neutcher. After he moved to L.A. in 1925, he became one of the most influential architects of the modern movement. He built over 100 houses here and helped to define modernism. From the 30s through to the 60s, everyone wanted a Neutra building, including movie stars and moguls. Then, for a couple of decades, his A-list homes were out of fashion. Now, once again, they're very hot properties. You can add for Neutra probably 30% more, maybe more. I just sold one that had it been an ordinary house, it was in uh, Bel Air. Uh, it probably would have been about 1.9, mm -hmm. and I just sold it for 2.8. So it gives you an idea of the kind of uh, markup. They basically want the name. The tag hag thing really works here, and uh, <laughs> you've got <laughs> that the name sells. And this one, is this a typical Neutra? Very typical. Um, here they've redone a lot of the finished surfaces that you see. Um, a lot of new, the silver post, classic Neutra. You've got these wonderful thin, long thin lines here, these big sheets of glass. The first thing out of every buyer's mouth is, I want a light and bright house. And they want to show off what they have as well. This is a town of show and tell, and everyone wants to say, I live in a Neutra house. He may have had a glam clientele, but above all, Neutra wanted to make houses that fitted his clients' needs, whoever they were. This small Palm Springs pad was built in 1937 for a yoga teacher. Neutra believed he should be part designer, part therapist, and he asked her to keep a diary of her habits. The result was a house that exactly fitted her lifestyle. So this was originally the back door, huh? where clients would come in. Current owner, Catherine Myler, has been renovating the house in line with Neutra's original ideas, which work just as well today. So this section was the yoga studio. Okay. And, there are, and so the windows were like this, so people couldn't see exactly. Presumably at different times of the day, the pool will reflect on the ceiling through her hand. Which has a lovely calming effect. Mm -hmm. You can just sort of sit and look at it. It ripples. Yeah. It's a very calm house to be in. Like Valium. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's the original marble slab. And this was perfect for doing makeup because yes. you get diffused light mm -hmm. and the mirror Mirrors on, both sides. on both sides of that little cabinet, so it opened up. Shoes were always in the air, so especially designed for the shoes with air vents, so the shoes don't stay so, so fresh. Everything, of course, with Neutra is in the perfect place. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to sort of find things and move around. I mean, the trash chute in the corner is in the perfect position mm -hmm. because if you're at the sink, doing things, peeling potatoes, making juice, you realize that you can just take the trash and drop it in the chute. And you it's don't done. have to bend down for yeah. the bag. And it goes that. straight out. You can access it from outside. It has a little door. Mm -hmm. No mess. No don't have down. to take the trash to the house. No. It's very perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> It's fantastic that people like Catherine are prepared to spend time and money on restoring beautiful pieces of architecture. But unfortunately, not everybody feels the same way. This beautiful house is built in 1962 for art collector Luella Maslon. After her death, the house sold for nearly two and a half million dollars, only to be demolished one month later. I wonder what was going through the guy's head, why he raised it to the ground, whether it was a personal thing, was he an art terrorist? He won't answer any questions, but the Maslin House no longer exists. Astonishingly, there are no laws in California to stop this kind of thing happening. Luckily, other people are going to great lengths to save Neutra's homes. In 1934, Neutra built this house for film star Anna Sten, a Russian actress who was brought to America by Samuel Goldwyn. He wanted her to be the new Greta Garbo. Until recently, the Sten House was rotting. Thankfully, its new owners were prepared to pay for pricey restoration work. They've employed specialist architects to get every detail just right. 
the ideas that Neutro was working with are just as relevant today as they were in the 30s when this house was built. That connection, that weaving or interrelationship between the interior and the exterior, those concepts are, are still relevant. Those are beautiful, powerful ideas of how buildings relate to the landscape. Sometimes it takes an extraordinary effort just to make something that was off the shelf in those days. And so for the glass, for instance, we're repressing ribbed glass. And it's taken, you know, 15 or 16 tries to get the color of the glass, the size of the ribs, the spacing of the ribs, and the texture of the glass right until it actually looks like the original glass. Now that seems like an extraordinary effort to go through, but it's a worthwhile effort. Almost the only way of knowing what a Neutra house should look like is to check photos from the time, chiefly the work of Julius Shulman. By copying his images, the Kaufman house has recently been returned to the natural beauty it had in 1946. During the intervening years, the house suffered. In the 1970s, it was owned by Big Nose Balladeer, Barry Manilow, whose decor was as cheesy as his songs. It's hard to imagine that this house was once covered in chintz and almost sold as a teardown. I think people should be allowed their own taste, but it's so great to see a house as Neutra originally intended it, full of elegance and simplicity.